Okay, so so before before we get started, like I said, this is going to be uh, kind of a short ceremony, one of those short and intimate ceremonies um, where normally we have an entire script and a program, but this really just consists of uh, us doing uh, Brock's oath and then uh, and then you guys uh, putting his rank on his shoulders. Um, we will find out soon enough, uh, you know, what his branch and everything's going to be. Uh, but I want to I want to talk a little bit about Brock. But before I talk about Brock, uh, I'm going to talk about me, which is, sounds a little weird, but I want you to understand something. All right. Um, back when I first got in the army, I enlisted in the army uh, when I was uh, 17 years old. Both of my parents were in the Navy. Um, and I always knew that I wanted to be in the military. It's something I always thought that I would do. Uh, and then at one point in time, I had the opportunity uh, to instruct cadets as a military science three instructor and assistant professor of military science at the University of Alabama. Uh, and I enjoyed that job so much uh, and enjoyed working with young people so much that I knew if an opportunity ever came up for me to do this again, that I would do it. And fortunately for me, the opportunity for Western Mission came, uh, came up and I was able to do that. Uh, and I say that and I tell you that uh, so that you understand that when I get to do things like this, when, when we get to uh, commission, you know, people like Brock and you see Lieutenant Gandhi on there and there's Lieutenant Herb uh, and, and I believe that's Katie Sibniewski, uh, Lieutenant Sibniewski and, um, and Lieutenant Larenvelt and, and all these guys that are on there. Um, it's just something that's such an awesome feeling to be able to do. All right. Because you have a group of young people and, and Brock in that. Uh, that works so hard at a goal to accomplish this. And it is not an easy thing to accomplish. And you've got, you know, a, another lieutenant that's right there with Brock that, that just went through this and knows exactly how difficult it is uh, to go through ROTC. Uh, not just the fact that you're just trying to go through school, uh, but also the fact that you've got all these things that ROTC lays on you. And, you know, the first and second year, it doesn't really seem like much, all right? Uh, you're kind of just going to class for an hour. You're going to lab uh, for an hour and you do PT Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's your freshman year, all right? And you do an FTX once a semester. Uh, then your your second year, your sophomore year, you're doing two-hour class, uh, still a two-hour lab. Uh, and then you've got the FTX and you're doing PT Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then things start to get a little difficult, all right? Uh, then you are doing your MS3 year. And that whole year, we are preparing them to go to advanced camp, uh, which is in Fort Knox, Kentucky, to pass advanced camp, um, which you have to do in order to commission. Uh, and then not only are we preparing them for that, but they're actually teaching the classes. They're teaching the MS1s and MS2s, the freshmen and sophomore. They're teaching them at lab. They have to prepare classes based off of what that lab is, that leadership lab is supposed to be, and they're teaching. Um, you know, the best way to learn something is to teach it. Uh, so, so they're having to do that. All right. And then they, they get past that hurdle of, of their summer, uh, and, and doing that and passing advanced camp. And then their MS4 year doesn't slack off at all because now they're actually running the program. All right. So they're the ones that are putting together the training for the MS3s to teach the MS1s and MS2s. Uh, so it's a lot of things that they do in that. And then, oh, by the way, you know, like Brock, some of them work, some of them have jobs. Uh, they all do extracurricular activities on top of ROTC. Um, so the chance to get to work with young men and women like Brock and to do that uh, is a complete honor for me. Uh, but I just wanted you guys to kind of understand what Brock does uh, why I'm so proud of him and, and every one of the lieutenants that we commission out of uh, Western Michigan. Uh, and I'm sure that you guys are absolutely uh, proud of him as well, uh, as you should be. Uh, and then I will say one more thing um, about Brock is uh, he told me that he wanted to, uh, initially he wanted to go into the California National Guard. Uh, and I know that probably would have been great uh, for a lot of you, because he'd have been, you know, staying in California, things like that. Um, but I was kind of sad about that. Uh, and then he came back later and told me 
hey, you know what? I really do want. I want to go active duty. Uh, and, and I was very happy with that. And I'm, I'm not trying to say the National Guard doesn't need good leaders. And they do. They absolutely do. Uh, but but being an active duty guy, uh, you know, I kind of, you know, we've got three components. We've got active duty, National Guard, and Army Reserve. Uh, and I kind of, you know, I, I obviously I kind of fight for that active duty since I'm active duty. Um, so I was extremely happy when he told me that he wanted to go active duty because I believe, uh, I believe the type of person that he is, he's going to provide, you know, that leadership that our active duty soldiers need. Uh, that American sons and daughters, they need people like him uh, that are common sense oriented, they're driven, all right, uh, and they want to do the right thing all the time, all right, uh, and that combination is going to make him uh, an outstanding lieutenant and somebody uh, that is going to go on to influence hundreds if not thousands of people because our lieutenants, they don't just take care of their soldiers. They take care of their soldiers. They take care of the Department of Army civilians that are with them. They take care of the soldiers' families, all right? And the amount of influence that he is going to have throughout his career is amazing. Uh, and that good leadership will inevitably help, you know, again, hundreds of thousands of people uh, through what he's going to be able to influence throughout his career. Uh, so, uh, so I think uh, I think without further ado, I'm going to uh, we're going to go ahead and administer the oath, and then we are going to pin those uh, pin the rank of second lieutenant onto uh, onto Brock. All right. Uh, so mom and dad just part a little bit uh, so that he can raise his hand. All right. Okay. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Hello. Having been appointed an officer. Having been appointed an officer. In the Army of the United States. In the Army of the United States. In the grade of second lieutenant. In the grade of second lieutenant. Do solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservations. Without any mental reservations. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Of the office of which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. All right, congratulations. You can go ahead and unmute your microphones. Uh, let's give... Uh, our newest second lieutenant of the United States Army, Brock Shalo, a round of applause. Hey, Brock. <laughs> Brock Ali. <laughs> hey. Okay. Uh, Mom and Dad, if you would do the honors of pinning the rank of second lieutenant uh, onto uh, uh, Brock's shoulders. <laughs> all right you look good you look real good um yes, so normally uh normally we do uh during these ceremonies normally we will do a uh first salute brock do you have anybody there available to do your first salute i don't sir unfortunately okay that's fine that's fine uh so normally the importance of the first salute uh the first salute um it's basically directed for the NCO. That's the first NCO that salutes that newly pinned officer. Uh, and the reason for that is, is that is the person that that officer believes helped them the most uh, in attaining their goal as a commissioned officer. Um, and I think some of you have heard this before. 
Um, but uh, my first salute uh, was my mother, uh, which was an awesome experience. It's a very uh, meaningful event. Uh, so uh, I ask that uh, Brock, you, when you're able to do it, if you would record it uh, and please uh, send that to Mr. Clayton, uh, that way we can have that and we can post it. All right, sir. Yeah, I'll be able to do it when I get back to Michigan. Say again? I said I'll be able to do it when I get back to Michigan, and then I'll send it to you guys for sure. Okay, good. So so because this is a small and intimate uh, affair, um, Brock, you get the opportunity to address uh, your family and friends, uh, which I don't know that you were planning on doing, but you now have the floor uh, to go ahead and speak to them uh, about how much they mean to you or whatever the case may be, but now the floor is yours. Hi, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, so just for all my family that are here and virtually as well, um, I just wanted to say thank you very much for being here today. Um, all of you who are here right now, I couldn't have gotten to where I am today without it. Um, your guys' constant love, support, and appreciation for me um, is unprecedented anything I've ever experienced before. Um, I hope that you guys can continue to support me for all my adventures in life. I know the Army is super confusing. It doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes. Um, but just know that I'm always going to have your guys' back. I know that's always that one. I love you all. And every one of you guys. And I can't wait to see where we go from here. Awesome. Let's give one more round of applause. Go, no Brock. <laughs> Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will uh, I will leave this running for a few minutes. Uh, for those of you that want to go ahead and turn your cameras on or that are still on here, uh, and say a few words to uh, Brock since it's being recorded. Now is your chance. Uh, but uh, this concludes our ceremony, and uh, congratulations, uh, Lieutenant Shalo, and uh, congratulations to the family and friends that got him to where he is today. Absolutely, thanks, sir. Yay. Thank you all for being here. Yeah. Grandma and Grandpa Shayla, can you guys hear us? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> Uncle Travis and Carol, it's good to see you guys. You two, our mic's on. Congratulations, Brock. Yeah. We're very proud of you. Congratulations. <laughs> Very much. I appreciate you guys being here. All my friends who are hiding still. Congrats. Thank you for being here. Congrats, Brock. Soon enough, we'll pin some cross rifles on those lapels. No, I, I don't want that. Thanks, Brock. <laughs> okay. Um, Bryce, thanks for being here. Katie, you too. Keenan, you as well. Brock. Can't wait for you to get back and celebrate. <laughs> That's for sure. Hey, Brock, you've got some uh, you've got some chat comments. I don't know if you saw them or not. When you get a chance, look at those. Did I look at them publicly? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're funny. I don't know how to get him get his attention, huh? Oh well, we can hear you. You can hear me? Yep, your mic's on. Oh, Janice. Hi guys. Oh, congratulations, Brock. Oh. So good. I 